Greetings, Brock Splash here with another big movie review. And this one is Spider Man Across the Spider Verse. It is the second of a three trilogy film with Miles Morales. And this one ended on quite a high note. But I'll give out the basic uh, premise of what I interpreted in the movie and how I felt about the movie. Okay, so the movie starts out with basically Gwen Stacy and about how she became a Spider-Woman and fortunately why she's sort of, not sort of, but is a criminal in her universe and why she had to leave, which was pretty sad and really good. And it ended with her joining uh, Miguel O'Hara, aka Spider-2099, with the other Spider-Man people in, well, another alternate universe because, well, her dad tried to arrest her. And then the movie switches over to Miles Morales, who is the main protagonist. And it's a quick re recount of his life, how he became Spider-Man, and how he's done a pretty good job for about, what, a year? Yeah, he's done really good as Spider-Man. As Miles Morales, it's taken a turn downward. Because he's been so busy as a superhero and keeping that identity, it's made it harder for him to do normal things. Like, I believe he has a hard time in school. He does not always, he's not always there for his parents when they want him to be. And he's not a full adult yet, so he has to, he's under their thumb. So it's a lot more stress. It's just stress piled on top of this poor kid. And he comes across as a villain, Spot, who looks like a, I thought it was a Dalmatian who spots a guy with a Dalmatian like suit who spots open up portals basically and I thought it was a suit but no we learned that this is actually the guy's skin he is stuck like this that switches over to Gwen Stacy who comes by and we learn that she's part of a large large group of spider people that they're the ones who, their job is ever since the, uh, okay, I've been told I've, this happened in a movie, but I didn't hear the line, but apparently, because of what Doctor Strange did, and I don't know if they're actually referencing the, uh, that third Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland, what is it? I'm forgetting the title, but I know someone's going to tell me it's this, <laughs> but, um, I don't know if that's referencing it, but apparently because of what Doctor Strange did, the creatures have been coming over to other dimensions, and Miguel O'Hara and his team basically put them back where they're supposed to go. That's the original premise. But then we learn with Miles... Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Miles also teams up with... I'm going to call him Indian Spider-Man because I cannot remember his name at all. It's just easier to say Indian Spider-Man. He and Gwen go over to Indian Spider-Man's universe. They team up. A cool bit of... Uh, fighting and saving people, which is awesome. Spot's there, and he recreates the Collider that, well, turn him into what he is. That destroys a portion of the city. Miles saves the captain there. And then we learn to me personally, this is Miguel O'Hara's true intention of creating the Spider-Verse organization. Basically, a captain has to die in each universe. Yeah. A captain. Not, it's not just any captain, but a captain who knows Spider-Man. It's a canon event. If not, apparently the whole universe becomes or gets destroyed. Why? I, I don't know. But, yeah. Miles doesn't believe it, or he believes that he could save the captain in his universe, who happens to be his dad. And then there's a huge chase scene where literally every spider person, save for a few, goes after Miles who manages to escape back to his dimension. But, plot twist! Miles is not in his own dimension. He's in a dimension where the spider came from that bit him. And it's there Miles meets Evil Miles. And then the movie ends with Miles, still an Evil Miles. Uh, I'm going to call it a punching bag chained around him. And you see Gwen round up the other Spider-Men who are on her side to help him.
Now, there are a lot more in the movie, but I gave the bare bones of what, what goes on. There, there are some that are important, such as Gwen goes back to her universe and discovers that, hey, her father's not captain anymore, which is significant because the whole point is she thought her father was captain and she was going to let him die to save her own universe. And that was my first big problem with this movie. Now, apparently each captain has to die in the universe, okay? Miles is the only one who speaks up how stupid this is. And yeah, it affected one universe Miguel was in, but how did he know that was the specific reason why the whole universe was destroyed? Yeah, tons of Spider-Men, they're all super smart, and they have Spider-Men smarter than other Spider-Men, but yet none of them, I don't know, thought to say, hey, this doesn't make sense. I I don't believe that's the reason why. If it is, I'll be honest, it's kind of stupid. <laughs> and... I'm trying, I'm trying to get what I didn't like out of the way to speak of positives. And Spot, he's great. I think he's fun villain. The way he transformed was amazing and it was fantastic. I just, what I didn't like was the whole reason why Spot became from wannabe villain to super villain is because Miles didn't take him seriously as a villain. That's it. He even pointed that out and Miles apologized. So, if Miles took him seriously as a villain, Spot wouldn't do this? If he's a villain, so wouldn't he have done something villainous either way? Or he just wanted to someone to recognize him as a bad guy, and then that's it? I mean, he's still a villain. Miles has to stop him. So, I feel like no matter what, Spot would have still gone down this route because he's a villain. That and Miguel... He's cool, awesome, doesn't make, well, I get why he does this. I don't have any problems with Miguel so much as everyone else just accepts what he does. Miguel, I, the moment I saw this guy and the way he started talking, he's crazy. Okay, that's his character. I can't figure out why everyone else is following this crazy guy. He's obviously crazy, but maybe it's because it's a kid's movie. So he's supposed to look crazy to us so we can interpret immediately, okay, there's something complicated about this guy. He's just off his rocker because of something that happened to him, which was traumatic, so it's understandable. And what was it? There was one other thing that I am skipping. Oh yeah, blaming Miles for being Spider-Man. Saying there's supposed to be one Spider-Man, but that was not Miles' fault, that was Kingpin's fault. But, uh, see, we're in an era where it's, the heroes are blamed even when they do nothing. And I don't like that. Like a hero could save 20 people. The one life they couldn't save because they just couldn't. It's their fault. They deserve it. And any punishment that goes to them is their fault. Okay. Sure. That, that's why to me superheroes have been itchy with me. I like it. But then there are times where the heroes get all the blame. And I don't like that. And <laughs> it makes me not care about what happens in the end. If you're going to blame a hero who's actually a hero for not being able to be everywhere at once, then that's dumb. I, I understand if the hero feels that way, but everyone else blames the hero, that's just dumb. And that's what Miguel is saying. It's Miles' fault because he got bit by a spider and he started helping people, so it's his fault. Sure. Not Kingpin's, Miles. Whatever. And, yeah, that's about it. The plot was kind of stupid, I'll, I'll be honest. I did not like the plot. It reminds me of Spider-Man Far From Home, which I'm probably going to get get some comments on. I don't care. Far From Home, I thought the plot was kind of stupid. The movie was fantastic. The three Spider-Man meeting together was fantastic. The villains were great. But the basic plot is, we're going to cure them all right before their deaths. And that should make everything better. Now for Green Goblin, okay. Doc Ock, sure. But the electric guy, Electro, I don't know if the power ever made him that way or if he was just... No, I don't think the power made him that way. It was just when he got power, he decided to start hurting people. And Lizard, 
trying to think. I think he was already crazy. I, I don't know. The issue is they got him just before they died. So my interpretation is they're still bad guys. They're still going to die. But that's besides the point. And it was still a fun movie, but I thought that was too bad. I'm probably the only one. So that's fine. But that's how I felt here. Watching the movie, I liked watching it, but then I thought this is dumb. There were scenes in the movie that felt too stretched out, such as Miles meeting Gwen. It's fantastic. But then it kept going on and on and on. I thought, okay, this feels like a pause in the film. Instead of going forward with the plot, they just pause it. And I get... How's it? There's, uh, there's parts where there's uh, breathers. Even in movies, we have a type of breather before action. It's great, but this one's extended too long. I couldn't figure out why. Why are extending this scene too long? Or the chase scene. It was great when I was Spider-Man chasing Miles and get spider cat, spider dinosaur, fantastic. But in the end, I noticed this chase scene is too long. What is going on here? And then I learned why. And personally, this is what I hated, hated about the movie. It ends in a cliffhanger. Now, personally, why I hated this is because I don't like spoilers. So I had no idea they intended to make a third sequel Spider-Man movie for this. I thought this was it. And maybe we'll get another one. So the moment ended in a cliffhanger. Oh, I was mad. Because the moment it ended, I realized that explains all those filler scenes I noticed throughout the movie. They're okay, but I noticed they didn't have to be there. It's because they were trying to extend this movie as much as possible without ending it. They hobbitized it. What do I mean by that? The Hobbit film, as fun as it was, it did not to be three movies. Maybe two at the most. But because they made it three, they extended scenes that did not have to be there. And it just made the, the three movie films, not the first, but it made the other two seem kooky. Yeah, I said kooky. And that's what I thought about this. I thought it was stupid. I did not like it. Okay, those are the negatives. Positives, the animation is fantastic all around. I feel bad for the people who worked on this movie because while I was sitting there watching the movie, I thought they put way too much in these animation stuff. They, they, they had to have <laughs> been stressed. But it was great. The way that each different universe has different animations. Spot, I like him. He's fun. And when he opens Portal and checked out the Lego universe, the Venom universe, oh, that was fantastic. I loved it. We saw the different spider man Indian Spider-Man, I like. I keep forgetting his name. I call him Indian Spider-Man. Spider-Punk, I thought it was great. His character is fantastic. Miguel O'Hara, the way he looks and acts, it looks like almost like a villain. He's great. Seeing uh, Spider-Man with his baby, Peter Parker, it was great to see him again. <laughs> and the way... Maybe he climbs around with Gale was trying, was trying to act serious. All different Spider-Man in general were great. Oh man, it was a fantastic scene in this movie. And one of the best, best scenes I thought personally was when Miles is in the wrong universe. He's with his mom and he tells her, I'm Spider-Man. And she asks, who? I thought for a moment, this is the part where Doctor Strange used the spell to make everyone who Spider-Man was. Because I didn't catch the line Miguel told Gwen in the beginning. I thought this was it. But no, he was in a wrong universe that didn't have a Spider-Man. And the moment Uncle Aaron, I call him Uncle Aaron because he calls him Uncle Aaron, the moment the uncle walked in, the music, the, the, the coloring, oh my, it was fantastic. It looked like, it looked like the devil walked in a room. And then Miles just hugs him. Man, that, that, that touched me in my heart. Like it, it shows that despite the uncle being a villain and nearly killing his own nephew, Miles still loved his uncle in the end. That was great. Until evil little Miles came in. I thought it was stupid. But Aaron, uh, the dude, permeated power. Up to the point that Miles, when he was chained, you see the uncle just slowly... Like... When you see the uncle slowly walk up to him, it, it was great. Oh. The animation was just A++ throughout the entire movie. It was awesome. And I, I, here's the thing. Here, there's something for everyone to enjoy in this film, I think. Because despite all the negatives I pointed out, I still had fun watching the movie in the end. Didn't like the ending. There are a couple parts where I kind of felt bored, but in the end, I liked the movie. 
and I hope the third one is great too. But in the end, we shall see. Kick. Drum. Bass. 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 Bass.